Welcome to A State of Sight. I'm Isaac Porter from Raleigh, North Carolina, and this is your weekly update in ophthalmology and eye care. We've recently been contacted on our Facebook page by a support group for Pellucid Marginal Degeneration, and I thought it'd be a great time to share details about this disease since it's not very common and there may be a lot of questions out there about it. Pellucid Marginal Degeneration, abbreviated PMD, is similar to keratoconus in that they both are forms of corneal ectasia or distortion of the shape of the cornea. So remember, the cornea is the clear shield that covers over the front of the eye. And if you remember from one of our previous episodes where we covered keratoconus, keratoconus is when the cornea progressively bulges forward into a cone shape and becomes thin, particularly in the center. With pellucid, the thinning is more in a band in an area towards the bottom of the cornea, and the bulging comes more forward and out in a larger area instead of a cone right from the center. In this, the thinning is usually below, and the bulging is more above the area of thinning. Both of these are considered ectasias, and can distort the vision significantly, causing patients to need to wear glasses with a large amount of astigmatism correction or a contact lens when the astigmatism cannot be properly corrected in the glasses. As time goes by, like keratoconus, in pellucid, it can bulge and distort more and more forward and make it difficult for people to wear contact lenses and may eventually require surgery. In this, potentially a corneal transplant would be needed, but unlike keratoconus, where a corneal transplant could be more successful, in pellucid, the corneal transplant has to be larger to include more of this area that is thin, since it's more out towards the outer part of the cornea, giving it a more complications during the surgery or afterwards, and a greater risk of rejection than patients have with a transplant for keratoconus. Because of this, alternative surgery techniques have been developed in order to support or bring up some of the area of thinning using patch grafts of corneal tissue or other procedures where segments are removed in order to take out the thin area and help the curvature become more regular. Usually pellucid is found when patients are between 20 or 40 years old and is present equally between males and females. In our episode 27, we covered corneal collagen crosslinking, which is a new treatment for corneal ectasia, and it may be proven to be a great treatment for pellucid as well. So again, if you have any comments or questions, please post. We'll be happy to interact with you. And until next time, good health and good sight.